B cells is from bone. That's why you got B. Okay? Because they complete their maturation in bone marrow. <coughs> T cells migrate uh, to the thymus. That's where you get the T. And it should be known that the thymus secretes a hormone called thymosin that stimulates the development of T cells. Okay? So the thymus creates this guy, and that stimulates the production of T cells. Okay, B cells produce antibodies. Remember that. These circulate in the blood <coughs> and lymph and attach to foreign antigens to mark them for destruction. All right, that's what these guys do. And if you want to know what this is called? It's called antibody mediated or humoral immunity. And uh, I got this chart here. Um, we're going to show this again in a minute, but it's just kind of shown here the, the B cells here from the bone. The, the thymosin, thymus creates thymosin, which stimulates the production of T cells. We'll talk about these uh, cytokines here in a moment. Okay, T cells attack infected cells directly, unlike antibodies, which affects it indirectly. These guys go right at it. This is referred to as cell mediated immunity or cellular immunity. Okay? Sometimes you hear these words thrown out if you're looking at some of these papers, some of these research papers, or uh, different things. And it's, it's good to be able to have some idea to, uh, not to discuss it with patients at this level, but it's good to have an idea of what, what we're dealing with here. T cells also regulate coordinate overall immune response. We'll see that in a minute. Okay. Um, just to show real quick here, cell, what is cell mediated reaction? Remember, is that a T cell or a B cell? That's a T cell, right? Here's the T lymphocyte. And then the humoral antibody synthesis, remember the antibodies come from the B cells. Okay, when a B cell encounters its triggering antigen, it gives rise to many large plasma cells. Just remember, plasma cell is like an antibody producing factory. Okay? B cell makes the plasma cells, and then guess what? Plasma cells here start making all these antibodies. So it goes from B cell, plasma cell, now we got the antibody guys. And this here is an antigen here that's triggering this response. Okay, antibodies belong to a family of large molecules known as immunoglobulins. Okay, they're proteins which are made up of chains of polypeptides, which are just basically amino acids. And they're shaped like a Y. But the tips of the Y here are shaped differently. Okay? And what it is, they have a different shape so that different antigens can fit into them. Okay? Or in other words, in other words where the antibody can hook into different antigens. Looks like this. Here's your antibodies. Okay? And you see they got different shapes. And here you have antigens. So this guy here is not going to, this guy can't hook into here. So this antibody won't work for that guy. This one here will work for this guy. Likewise, this one here will connect into this antigen to go ahead and destroy it. There's five classes of immunoglobulins. Antibodies disable bacteria directly by interlocking with their toxins. Or they can coat, which is also called opsonizing bacteria, which leads to enhanced phagocytosis by white blood cells. Remember what phagocytosis means? And eating it, eating it, munching on these guys. See this right here, this macrophage here? This is a bad guy, this is an antigen here. This is phagocytosis, it's fixing to eat this guy. But listen up, these are the antibodies here, okay? All right, here's your, uh, here's your B cells, okay? And then here's your antibodies. And the antibodies are hooking up. See how they're hooking up with these antigens? And it kind of makes it kind of tasty, if you will, for the macrophage. Makes it easier for this guy to want to eat them. That's what's called opsonizing, coating it. Makes it want to eat that thing. If you're like Dr. Bo, you eat some bad food, and what's the reaction you get when you eat some bad food, right? You get some bad stuff coming out of you. Is that a healthy response or a non-healthy response? Good. Right? What's well, a healthy response? It's a good thing. Your body's trying to get this stuff out of you. But also, too, when you get sick and you get that awful sore throat, okay? Is a sore throat a good thing or a bad thing? It doesn't feel too good, right? But it's a very good thing. But here's the thing to tell patients. 
The sore throat is not caused by the bug. The bug is not what makes your, your throat sore. Your immune system is what makes your throat sore. You realize that? Because the cells in your throat, and I'm oversimplifying things here, but not really that much, but the cells in your throat are got all those bugs in them. Virus, bacteria, whatever. They're loaded. And what happens is these guys are floating in your bloodstream, these killer T cells. And they're going to go in there and they're going to destroy those infected cells. So they go in here like this and they start blasting these cells here. These little cells of the layer of the, of the tissue in your throat. They're killing all those bad cells because they're full of bugs. That strips a layer of tissue from your throat and it hurts like heck. But it's your immune system that's making your throat sore. It's not the bug. The best thing is to prevent it. But you got to prevent it before the kid is three. That's the critical time because that's how the immune system is developing. Now, what does the evidence show in the literature? Now, I'm not going to show you all the references. The references are all in the textbook. And there's a lot more than these references. These are just the references that I use. And these are references in medical journals that supports this. And we know this. Um, if you do these things, you're going to increase significantly your chance of developing atopic disorders. Allergies, asthma, and other disorders. Okay? Exposure to antibiotics prior to the second year of life. Okay? You gotta just have, you gotta do everything you can to keep from giving that kid an antibiotic, okay, while they're little. Okay? Because it will significantly increase their chance of developing atopic disorders. Various vaccinations. <clears throat> we'll talk about this in a second. Uh, reduced exposure to endotoxins, hygiene hypothesis. Well, here's Cameron. <laughs> My youngest getting adjusted. Breastfeeding. I'll talk about that real quick. Um, when I was putting together this book, I had a little section where I made a little statement about the benefits of breastfeeding. And one of the reviewers said, well, you know, that's nice, well, and good, but, you know, it would be good to have something to back it up, you know, some evidence. So, you know, when you got realize you're doing these books, you have deadlines and it's craziness, it's lots of stress. So I went on a week and a half binge into the literature on breastfeeding. And I actually created a section that has, I think, 67 medical re references on the benefits of breastfeeding. And uh, here, uh, just to kind of throw it at you here, the preponderance of the evidence shows that the incidence and duration of breastfeeding significantly decreases the risk of offspring developing what? Allergic rhinitis asthma and respiratory illnesses, atopic dermatitis. These are atopic disorders here, okay? Celiac disease, childhood acute leukemia and Hodgkin's disease. We got four references on that. Diabetes, digestive dysfunction, infant mortality, obesity, otitis media, sudden infant death syndrome. <coughs> While it tends to increase cognitive function and proper jaw development in children that are breastfed. Isn't that 